Okay, now we're going to talk about layer styles in Photoshop and just do an overview of layer styles. Um, and basically we're going to show you how to transform just simple shapes and simple colors and basic layers from something like this into something more dynamic like this with just using layer styles. Now layer styles could be accessed in a couple different ways in Photoshop. Um, the easiest way is double clicking on a layer. Just double clicking it will bring up our layer styles. In our layer styles we have all these different options, all these different um, effects that you could put on a layer. And we're going to go through these one by one, but I just wanted to quickly show how to access these. Also, you can access them from layer, layer style, blending options. That will pop up the exact same dialog box with all the same bells and whistles in there. Now I'm going to start from scratch and I'm going to remove all my layer styles and all my effects. So by doing that you could go into the layers panel and every layer that has a layer style applied to it or an effect you'll see that there's this icon that has a little effects in there. And there you go with our tooltip saying indicates layer effects. Um, double clicking that again will bring up your layer style properties in the menu. But if you right click on that you'll see that there's another menu that pops up that has all these layer effects applied and copy, clear, paste, global light, create layers, hide all effects, scale effects. Um, we'll get into this in a little bit, but right now I'm interested in clear layer style. And so I'm going to do that for each one of my layers and clear the layer style. Again, you can see that the the shapes in this file are very simple. They're just a couple circles and a solid color. And then we're going to use the layer styles to build it back up to having the more dynamic looking buttons. Now we're going to start with our red button here. And our red button is just a simple shape that I created in Photoshop using the ellipse tool. And you can see there's just nothing on it really. It's just a basic shape. Now accessing the layer styles. I'm going to double click this layer and this brings up our layer style menu. Also again under layer, layer style, blending options that will do the exact same thing. So we're going to go through each one of these tabs individually and talk about all the different uh, bells and whistles that this has. And we're going to start with the styles. Now the styles is displaying right now what is in your preset manager. So if we loaded anything that was custom into the preset manager, um, it will show up here. Or if we click on a triangle, we can go down to another menu that has reset styles, load styles, save styles, replace styles, and all that stuff. We can display it in different ways, and then also load in some presets that Photoshop gives you. And then there's my custom one. Now I don't really have a lot of styles, but um, I just have a few here that are loaded in. And so here's where you can kind of manage all your styles. Now the blending options tab is the default tab for the layer styles. So anytime you open up the layer styles it's going to take you to this tab right here. And if you could see some familiar stuff right here, you have the blend mode which is your layer blend mode. The same thing is in your layers at right here. As you see, change this to multiply, screen, overlay, so on and so forth. You have your layer opacity. There's your slider for that. And over here on the right you can see there's kind of like a swatch icon little image previewer of what your layer style is going to look like. And it tries to basically build a visual representation of your layer style. Now it's kind of accurate, kind of not accurate based off of you know what you have on your layer, but it uses a square to represent that. Um, under advanced bleeding you have your fill opacity which is going to be the opacity of your original pixels on that layer that separates out from the pixels that are on your layer style. So quickly to show an example of that I'm just going to turn on stroke and reduce my fill opacity and you'll see that the original pixels for my layer becomes uh, transparent while my layer style stays the same. Um, you have your channels, red, green, blue. I could turn them all off, or you could only display one channel. 
Moving on to the knockout, there's shallow and deep. This is more of an advanced feature, and our button example here is not a good example for this, and we will show you this a little bit later in another example. Now the blend interior effects is a group. Um, that's a, a bit interesting, but we'll go over that really quick. Now, we have our general blending mode here for our layer, but in each tab there is a blend mode. So every tab has a blend mode, and it gives you flexibility to sort of combine and mix and match different blend modes on top of your um, layer blend mode and how it's applying to all your layers underneath. So going back to our default tab, um, clicking this on will blend all the different effects and the layer modes inside these tabs with your regular blending mode for the layer and combine them all together and give you a result that way. So it's interesting and in some cases um, it's pretty handy. Um, but we'll show that in another example later. Blend clip layers as a group. That's pretty straightforward. And there's our tooltips popping up everywhere here. So um, transparency, you can see that use the shape of the interior and the effects. Um, that's on by default. Layer mask hides effects. That's pretty straightforward. Same with vector masks hides effect. If you have these clicked, any, any mask that you have on a layer is basically going to drop out or affect the layer style or the effects that are on that layer. Now the blend if mode, this is another advanced blending mode. Um, there's gray, red, green, and blue. And again, this button example is not a good example for this. So we're going to move on to the drop shadow. So the drop shadow, basically, as you can see, it just popped up right here. We have a drop shadow and we have our blend mode. So we can apply a different blend mode. We can change the color. and our opacity. We'll change this to multiply back so we can see it. Um, now we have the angle, which is the angle of where that this drop shadow is cast from. And there's this use global light. And we'll get into this in a little bit, but basically um, Photoshop has a global light that affects all of the layer styles and all of the effects that are within Photoshop. And you could separate this out um, in the layer styles by turning this off. And basically the angle will control um, this effect for this tab only and not for all tabs. So let's just jump into inner shadow really quick and you can see that here's our use global light again and here's our angle and again if we turn this off we'll basically just localize that angle to this tab and to this particular effect. Um, so then we have distance and you can see the shadow draws away from let me move this out of the way a little bit the distance is basically how far your shadow is offset from your original pixels on that layer. Then there's the spread, which is sort of how tight the falloff is for that shadow, and the size. So size and spread sort of go together. So the bigger the size that you have, the more flexibility you have with your spread. But if your size is very low, you can see that your spread isn't going to be able to do a whole lot there. Now we have our contour, which gives us a bunch of predetermined shapes for how this drop shadow is drawn. So there are different curves that sort of interpolate um, the distance and different methods for um, drawing the drop shadow. Now with these, you can also load more, and you could save some, you could edit these, um, or and go into the preset manager and load more too. Then there's anti-alias, which basically just anti-aliases the um, drop shadow into um, your layer a little bit more. And then there's noise. So obviously, when you drag the noise up, it creates more noise. and bringing it down. So you could dial in your noise there and it's always good just to add just a tiny bit of noise to things just so everything isn't so perfect. Um, but again that's based on what you're working on, what you're doing. Layer knocks out drop shadow. You can see that our pop-up here, used to obscure the shadow when fill is transparent. And then there's make default and reset to default. 
So say you like these settings a lot, you can hit the Make Default button, and any time that you um, load up the layer style and click the drop shadow, it is going to set whatever you have set here and make that the default. Reset the default will basically reset the original Photoshop layer style. So I'm just going to quickly dial in a shadow right now. Um, so I'm going to turn this off. Let's leave this there. I'm going to change my size a little bit. Change my distance. The opacity. Keep it a little bit subtle. Add a little bit of noise to this. And say I like that. And we're going to move on. Now Inner Shadow um, basically allows you to control the shadow on the inside of the object, inside of the pixels. So Drop Shadow controls the drop shadow around the pixels on the outside. Inner Shadow basically allows you to control the shadow on the inside of the pixels. So again, we have our Blend Mode, Opacity, our Angle again, Distance, Choke, Size, and your choke is basically the hardness of the falloff. And you can basically see what it's doing there. Again, you have your contours, you have your noise, and your make default reset to default. So I'm just going to grab something like this, drop it down just a little bit, just create a shadow, and move on to outer glow. Now outer glow, again, is creating your pixels outside of your opacity. Now your outer glow basically creates a glow around the pixels that are on your layer. And again, you have your blend mode. You have your opacity, noise, color picker for the color of your glow. Or you could design a gradient for it. And your elements. So they're softer which allows you to have a softer glow and precise which is exactly pinpointing the pixels that are on your layer and drawing a glow from that. Softer sort of interpolates it to just have a softer feel and you can see what that is doing there, the result of that. Your quality, there's a range that controls the gradient or your color and then there's jitter which basically is noise and so you could create some effects there then make default, reset to default. So going over each one of these, you can see there's a lot of similarities in all these tabs, but they're all very flexible and you can all sort of just dial these what you want um, and what you're looking for. Inner glow is basically the exact same thing, but is applied to the inside of your pixels that are on your layer. Bevel and emboss now this allows you to create a sort of pseudo 3D look to your button. There's inner bevel, outer bevel, emboss, pillow emboss, and stroke emboss. Now you could sit and mess with these and kind of um, you know figure out what you're looking for. There's a technique which is smooth, chisel hard, and chisel soft. Let me zoom in so you can kind of see this better actually. Um, so let's go back to smooth and chisel hard. Your size, soften, and then there's your up, down, direction and your depth so you can make it feel really deep or a little bit shallow. Now the shading, again there's your global light. You can turn this off and control where you want the light source to come from. There's your altitude for how high you want it to go. And then your highlight mode. So again these are layer transparency modes that you can used to dial in um, different parts of your button and opacity. So Photoshop has a very interesting workflow where it's, it's kind of like layer style, like layer transparency mode, dial it in, use opacity, 
and use color to sort of use those together to get the um, the look that you're trying to achieve. And um, then there's your shadow mode, which you can you know use any of the layer transparency modes again. Pick a color if you'd like. And control your opacity. Now, I don't want to spend too much time dialing this in. This is just an overview. Um, so we're just going to skip ahead to the next section, which is contour. And in this particular case, the contour element is very similar to the contours that is in the bevel and emboss. And your texture. So your texture allows you to load in a pattern from your preset manager or from your patterns and kind of mix it in to however you might want to use it to just create uh, additional effects. Like This one's kind of interesting because it could give you a, like a fake reflection. Um, there's your scale and there's your depth and then you could invert this or you could link it with the layer. You could also click and drag on this to give you a finer control on that. Moving on to satin. Now satin creates sort of a, I guess, fake satin look. Um, again, it gives you all the same parameters as all the other layer styles and you could sort of just dial it in with your angle and your distance and basically it draws two circles, like you can see there's kind of like a circle here and a circle here, and they're kind of um, blended together. You can see them draw it closer and blend to create this effect. And you have your size, and you have your um, contours again, and your make default. And so you can see that your texture is more apparent now that the satin was turned on. And I'm not really digging this, this satin thing too much. But again, this is just an example. And we're not going to get too crazy here. Um, color overlay. Now you can always change the color of things in your button just by clicking a color. Or you can add a gradient through your gradient editor. Again, gives you all the same controls. Or you could even add a pattern on top of your pattern that you already have to create um, some sort of weird effect. Um, Control your scale, link with layer, etc. And then your stroke. Basically, make an outline around the pixels that are on your layer. And you could do outside, inside, or center. Let's just do inside here, a blend mode of uh, multiply, fill type is color, a gradient that you choose, or a pattern. And you could go ahead and dial it in. Now, say that you like this style and everything is cool with it, you can just go ahead and create a new style and you could name it. And you could say include layer effects and include blending, include layer blending options. So, include layer blending options also includes your blending layer that is applied to that layer and also all the layer effects that are in your layer style. And then if we exit out of here we could go into our styles and again we have our all our presets we can see that our new style has been applied. And in the top right gives you your styles menu where you can add a new one display your styles differently, your preset manager loading and unloading, um, Adobe's presets that they provide to you, 
um, and then your custom ones that you've loaded, and so on and so forth. Now, you could click in here with the bucket, and it will also add a new style that way. Now, I'm going to go ahead and revert this file to my original. And my original has layer effects that I like. And you can see here's our um, little effects icon, which means we have a layer style applied. And I like this one, so I'm just going to go ahead and save this into my layer styles here. So I'm going to open this guy up, use my fill bucket, and I'm going to say Dave's button, and include everything for that layer. And you can see it's been added here. Here's the one that we just did. And now we have those in our Styles palette. So now that we added that into our Styles palette, or our panel, you can see they're all there. Now we can just click on one of our layers, and we could swap our layer styles. And it's really easy. Just click on it. And you can see that there's the one that we dialed um, during the overview. And here's a couple other ones that I had that were very simple. And then back to the one that we have um, as our latest and our result that we're looking for. Now let's talk about the layer styles in the layers panel. So if you right click on the icon, we get our menu again. And these are just different ways of displaying the layer style. And you could turn them off and on here, and you could copy and clear. But so let's go ahead and try copying one. First of all, I'm going to remove these. I'm just going to say clear layer style, clear layer style. Now the easiest way to copy and paste a layer style is to right click on it, say copy layer style, go to the layer that you want to copy it to, right click and say paste layer style. So you can see that it pasted all the effects over but the color is a little wonky, and that's because we edited some colors um, that were specific to red that weren't to green. So let's open that up and fix it really quick. So looking at our layer styles, I have the inner shadow going on. I have the outer glow. I have the inner glow. A gradient. And stroke. So looking at the inner glow, it looks like that has a, a red tint to it. So I'm just going to put that into the green kind of fix that up a little bit there. And then our outer glow has this brownish to it, which I'm going to leave. The inner shadow looks like it has a red tint to it, so I'm just going to push that into maybe the yellow a little bit to make it fit more of our green color scheme here. And then as we look at our gradient, it has red in it. So we're just going to swap out the color of the red and flip it into, maybe I'll push it in here a little bit, and go from there. So now that we copy the red to the green, we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing and apply it to the blue. So we're going to do copy layer style, paste layer style, open up our layer styles, inner shadow, it's geared towards yellow, we're going to push it into the blue, outer glow is cool, inner glow looks like it's using this green, so we're going to fix the gradient and push that into blue, other gradient overlay, push this, oops, push this into blue, And we're just going to call it a day on this one. Um, so again, if you open up the uh, little arrow that's to the right of the effects button, it gives you your effects and a list of each one that this particular layer style is using. And you could toggle off and on the visibility. So you can see there, effects, on off, inner shadow, on off, outer glow, inner glow, gradient overlay, stroke. So that's available for anything with a layer style. And um, there we have our three little buttons.
that we made with layer styles only and we can use our right our menu and right click on it and we could do hide all effects there's our original layers show all effects and now let's take a look at the global light create layers and how they affect um, the layer styles and we're also going to take a look at scale effects so the global light as we talked about before this is sort of a control for the global light and like in a kind of an override so if we click around inside the angle you can see that all of our layer styles that are using the global light are changing so this is just a way that you can kind of quickly offset um, the angle for all of your layer styles uh, change the altitude the angle and I guess you could preview it or not preview it and uh, it's just another way to kind of fine-tune and control your uh, layer styles going back into our menu we have create layers and we have scale effects let's scale effects really quick and basically what this allows you to do is overall scale your effects globally rather than going into each layer individually and scaling all the effects to something that you you're looking for like say you had to um, resize your image to something smaller or larger you can go ahead into the scale layer effects and make it either twice as big or make it half as much or you know like five times as big um, and edit your effects that way if you need to now the create layer is interesting because say you're really happy with the result of the layer style um, so you really like this button here but when you want to control something from a pixel level that Photoshop isn't going to allow you to do inside the layer styles you sort of rasterize it and you can create the different layers um, that make up the layer style so what's going to happen here if we open our red we have our inner shadow outer glow inner glow gradient overlay and stroke so if we right click on this and do create layers what Photoshop is going to do is create a layer for each one of these particular aspects or elements or parts to the layer style and make them into a layer so let's do that create layers so now you see under red we have reds outer glow our red color red gradient fill reds inner glow inner shadow inner stroke I'm just gonna quickly group these so I can um, work with it a little more easier and I'm just gonna call this red so now our layer styles have sort of been rendered out into these different layers that make it up so there's our inner stroke there's our inner shadow our inner glow and our gradient fill and our outer glow now we still have our red color here so if we want to change it to whatever we can do that but we have rendered out the different layers for the layer style so say the gradient fill we didn't really like that too much and it's on screen we can go ahead now and do add with it and we could tweak it some more and maybe we didn't like the hard edge on it so much and we wanted to edit that so we could just go ahead in with our brush and we can add a mask to that layer and say let's just mask out part of this to make it a little softer or say we didn't like the shadow and we wanted to mask out part of the shadow to get a better highlight along the bottom and that's basically you know the overview for the layer styles and effects now this particular example is geared only towards making a button but layer styles are extremely powerful and can be used on concept art graphic design basically anything um, that you can use your imagination with and um, we'll look at a couple more examples after this